change? Um, I think I'd like to start with you, Mr. Kosha, if I could. Will we restore the Seattle to Vancouver, British Columbia service this month? Distinct possibility, although there are some sort of final arrangements that need to be made in order for that to happen. Certainly our expectation is that by the end of the year that would happen, but um, we are working very, very hard at trying to make that date sooner as possible. What is the, what is the issue with restoring that date? Because we've kind of made announcements it's going to be restored, and then I would have said that that was an easy yes that you were going to give me. And so I get that when you're talking about service, you want to be accurate. I get that part, but. As you know, in, in the recovery from the pandemic, we've had to face many, many challenges. I frankly was very tempted to give you a very quick yes, but our experience since recovering from the pandemic shows us that we need to be incredibly cautious about the commitments that we make in terms of being able to meet them given some of the variables we can't control. But. Um, our, our feeling is that we're able to get both the workforce and the commitments in place and hopefully within the next 30 days that would be possible. But um, I could not tell you today that that's an absolute certainty. Well, I'm glad you brought up this very important word because I'm not sure that I heard many of the nominees talk about this and that is the issue of workforce. So this is the critical issue. And I think that when we're talking about this service, which means so much economically to our regions, I mean, when I think about the Gulf Coast, I have to put it a word because my colleague mentioned it. I am very supportive of reestablishing of that service. It has been way too long for us not to have that established. So we had a pandemic and we had disruption of services in key areas across the West. Uh, and my colleague, I'm sure from Montana, will show up at some point in time and, and talk about that. So I think what, what we need, what I need before I can support any of the nominees before us today is a commitment for us to come up with a workforce strategy and plan that allows us to continue. We cannot simply say we don't have enough conductors, we don't know, have enough baggage handlers, we don't have enough this. The public believes they survived the pandemic, so now they want to see the services restored. And we all have workforce issues. Everybody in America has workforce issues. But what I didn't hear enough of is what does Amtrak believe they need to do about that to get the services reestablished that we need in America. So I'm a big fan you know, of the Amtrak services. I don't know if any of the other board, uh, nominees want to talk about workforce issues or what you think Amtrak needs to do on that front. Mr. Coase. I would just say that it, it does require some patience. We're seeing it in my community. Uh, with issues of construction, materials, things like that. Um, I would agree with Mr. Kosha on the fact that it's hard to pin a date on things. And, and uh, I've found as a mayor that uh, you don't announce a date until you've got a pair of scissors in your hand and ready to cut a ribbon yep. because it's really, really difficult to plan how things are going to happen. But the need for workforce training is a huge issue. Uh, we're seeing it. Our community college is, is stepping up trying to train people, but it takes time. And, and there are a lot of people that realize this is an issue to be dealt with and are working very hard on it. Well, I'm, I'm very serious about this because I saw the disruption of the service and had to press Amtrak on it as it related to Montana. And what was it about? It was about conductors. And then what was it about? It was about getting a schedule of conductors and making it work. And now if we're saying we are delaying the Seattle to Vancouver service again because of not having baggage handlers on the Canadian side. These are all problems that affect the public. This is, I guess I just wanna say, we're not messing around here. We're not messing around here when it comes to the reestablishing these services. So I hope that the nominees will give a lot of thought to what are we gonna to do to make sure that we have a workforce uh, to, deliver these services and get about this task of expansion. If I could, would Sen yes, Senator, I'm sorry to interrupt you. If I can just expand on the yes, comment please. you just made, because I think there's two things that I wanted to point out. One is that you make an absolutely excellent point about the fact that in order to recruit the people we need to operate these services, we've got to think way outside the box from what we normally did. And we are, we are doing that. And I, I say this to sort of respond to your need for a commitment, certainly for me, and I think others would share this, that we have, we are um, 
doing things that we've never done as a company before in terms of the recruiting process, going right down to the idea of working with different unions to create uh, apprenticeship programs. We've done job fairs in a host of cities around the country, and it's, it has created great results. We've, as I mentioned in my testimony, we've already hired 2,800 people since the beginning of this fiscal year. Our target number is 4,000, and we think we're well on the way toward bringing a lot more people into it. And to sort of get back to that, the reason why I was being cautious about my response in connection with uh, sort of restarting the Cascades is that our start date that is literally the, in the information that we circulate among ourselves is to begin one frequency on September 26th. Now, I know because I'm, I'm, I'm ultimately responsible as the chair that we will meet that date and we will do everything that is humanly possible to do that. But I also know that you know, we have had disruptions in the past, but you should rest assured that we are committed to a very aggressive recruitment program that we think has already shown very positive results and that we're committed to restoring the Cascade service and expect that by the 26th, at least one frequency will be back in service. Thank you. Thank you. Senator